founding father without a father, an orphan, an immigrant, a decorated war vet. We're not talking about Alexander Hamilton, but a Roman emperor who lived over a thousand years before him. Publius Aelius Hadrianus was born in Spain in 76 AD, and upon his parents' deaths, Hadrian, as he grew to be called, was adopted by Trajan, who soon became emperor. Trajan encouraged Hadrian's growth in the military, eventually making him the governor of Syria after Hadrian proved himself by solidifying that territory for the Roman Empire. Even more influential in his life was Pompeia Platina, Trajan's wife, who oversaw Hadrian's classical education, inspired him in the Greek culture and religion, established Hadrian's marriage to her niece, Vibia Sabina, and ensured his ascension as Rome's emperor after the death of her husband in 117 AD. Hadrian rose to the occasion, having a handful of disloyal senators killed and building an empire based on protecting the Rome that already existed. A Roman emperor unconcerned with conquests and colonization was new to the people, and it led to a great period of prosperity for the European territories and a stabilized Roman empire. So who was Hadrian the man? In short, a gay pagan. Hadrian married Sabina quite young and loyally took her on his travels when he was emperor. Hadrian spent more than half of his 27-year reign traveling outside of Rome, but they had a famously terrible marriage. Absolutely no love there. No children, and they did not share a home or tent while on the road, much less a bed. Hadrian's preference for men was well known, and being gay or bisexual was very common in ancient Roman Greece. Part of Hadrian's affinity for Greek culture might have been derived from this sole connection to their acceptance of LGBT lifestyles. He found himself dubbed Grecula, or Little Greek, because of his love for and adherence to Greece's ways, and indeed he spent a lot of his life in Greece, rebuilding Greek temples and infrastructure, most notably the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, as well as a library in Athens you can still visit today. In fact, I can take you on a tour of it. Emperor Hadrian would participate in the Eleusinian Mysteries twice and was the first Roman leader to wear a beard, a Greek custom. The love of his life was a gorgeous man named Antinous, who was known for his beauty and loyalty to his emperor. They traveled together for a decade until their visit to Egypt in 128. On the Feast of Anubis, the day of the god's rebirth, Antinous died while Hadrian and he sailed on the Nile River. Many believe he was killed due to his influence on the emperor. Some say he simply died of an illness in a new climate, and still others believe that it was a planned sacrifice. Whatever the reason, Hadrian started a mystery cult religion that would continue centuries after his death and built the city of Antonopolis on the Nile River in his honor. Vibia Sabina lived her life second fiddle to Hadrian's love for Antinous, and we can only imagine what it must have been like to see him literally deify the real love of his life while still ignoring her existence. But the fact remains that even today, Antinous is viewed as a god of homosexuality and his cult is warmly remembered. Temples and statues to him can be found in numerous museums across Greece, and his influence, while certainly not as strong as that of his lover, is still felt because of the strong love Hadrian had for him. Hadrian's villa is a temple of its own to the emperor and his devotion to Greek gods, and above all, his beloved Antinous. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Emperor Hadrian. If you'd like to learn more, please leave a comment letting us know and we'd love to do a part two. Please subscribe so that you get notified of our videos released every Tuesday. Thanks for seeking Numina with me.